First off, I want to thank the uh, brave men and women who work behind the wall. I want to thank them on a national level because their job goes on How recognizing. How did they try to turn a guard? Well, President, uh, correctional officer. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, but correctional officer. How are you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji, host of Tear Talk. I want to talk about the importance of policy and how by following policy and procedure, we can lift ourselves away from being complacent. Russ Hamilton wrote a great article the other day. I put a video of the article on my YouTube channel and it's about complacency. Guys, it is our deadliest enemy and I've been looking to compliment this. Now, I have touched on complacency before, but I want to readdress it because it is a concern. Complacency sneaks up on you. You don't realize you're being complacent until it's too late. So if anything, this video can serve as a reminder of the dangers of being complacent and maybe a wake up call for those who may have strayed from what policy and procedure says needs to be done. So we get back from our sponsors, we're gonna talk about complacency and how knowing those policies and procedures can help you avoid being complacent. Now guys, if you haven't, the show Tear Talks for you, you brave men and women that work in correction, so please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell's gonna notify you every time I post up a video. I right, stand by for our sponsor. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University. Learn from the leader. Thank you guys for listening to our sponsor guys at the end of the video i posted uh, russ's um video on complacency so just click the box and it'll take you right to his video great video it covers concerns and the dangers of being complacent guys th the concern i have here is complacency is such a deadly enemy it's deadly because it's slow and subtle and it sneaks up on you it sneaks up on you grabs a hold of you and it does that before you even know that you're at risk it just comes out of nowhere. And complacency occurs because, one, we're looking for shortcuts. You know, sometimes an effort to speed things up, we become complacent. We bend the rules a little bit just to make it more convenient. Or sometimes we're lazy. Sometimes we're lazy. And we're just looking to do things with the minimal effort, minimum amount of work. And the problem is, is when that effort, that minimal effort becomes the norm. When that minimal effort becomes the norm, there's a problem. Because now you're circumventing policies and procedures that were put in place because it is the lifeblood of the facility. They're put in place for a reason. Guys, policies are put in place because they're based on the failures and successes of the facility. When something good happens, we keep it. When something bad happens, we get rid of it. So to ignore policy, you're ignoring the history, the standards, the evolution of what's best kept practice. So when it comes to complacency, right off the bat, the first thing you have to realize is that, you know what, when was the last time I read my policies and procedures for my unit or for my area? I mean, management should really push on that at least once a year, make it mandatory, have those officers sign off that they understood those policies and procedures. If anything, it's to get liability off management because we're getting the effort out there for you guys to read it. But for those officers, if you're signing, you better read it and you better understand it. And management will be there to answer your questions if you don't. But if you guys get a chance, the moment that there's downtime in that unit, read that policy, read that procedure and see if you're in line with what that policy and procedure says, even if you're working with someone else, ask them, hey, I see you doing this, but did you know the policy says this? Like, I see you're letting out 30 inmates. Policy only says 20. And that, that forces us to go back and try to understand where that change occurred. Most likely, some of these changes that occur is because somebody tried to speed something up for a moment, and then people realize, oh, that, that, was, that actually worked. We should do that more often. Yeah, but you just totally broke away from policy. Now, that new change becomes the norm. Now, God forbid, if you venture even a little further off, you're way far off from policy. You understand that, guys? Policy sets the foundation. It sets the foundation. The more we waver off from that policy, the more we put people at risk. Ultimately, the, the, the more we put the facility at risk. So we always want to make sure that we understand what policy says and then go back to look to see, are we doing these things correctly are we doing this correctly 
That's the key. I love rookies. When rookies come in and they're fresh out of the academy, they look at things from a policy perspective. So if you happen to be training a rookie, you should be training them from policy and not from practice at first. Let them understand policy first. Because the last thing we want is for complacency to breed complacency. All of a sudden, you get a way of life in, in, in the facility that is so far from policy because complacency has breeded complacency. It gets to the point where the rookies that are coming in, they'll have five, six years down the line and they'll be like, well, that was the, that's what's supposed to happen? Well, that's not how, how I was trained. Of course, I'm going to go back and say, well, did you read policy? Did you read that you are really not following policy at this point? But they always go back to that person that trained them. And sometimes those good rookies, they ask questions, guys. They'll come in and they'll be like, hey, I noticed you're doing this, but I remember in the academy it said this, or I remember reading the post order on this post and it said to do this. Listen to those questions. Go back and read that policy. Are you doing it correctly or is the rookie right? Is the rookie actually telling you, hey, this isn't done by what policy says how it should be done? And then read it, make the adjustments. And then maybe even thank the rookie. Thank you for bringing it up because I've been doing it so long this way that I did not realize that not only am I straying away from policy and procedure, but how complacent I am being. I did not realize that. You know, a, a lot of people, they, they look at rookies and they kind of want to stray away from them. But believe it or not, guys, you can get training from rookies as well as a senior officer. Sure, there's a lot to give. You got that experience. You, you got that, you know, I know this facility and, and I'm definitely something that's going to be a value to you as you begin your career. But they're also bringing in the energy and they're bringing fresh eyes. So you need to see what their eyes see and you need to get an understanding of their concerns. And again, if they have questions, answer them. But if they're questioning a certain practice that you do, go back and make sure that you're teaching them the right things because don't forget eventually they're going to be teaching somebody and they're going to be teaching somebody based on what you taught them and again that goes back to complacency breeding complacency i love getting new supervisors new supervisors come in they look at things with a fresh set of eyes and their only foundation may be yes what they've learned at another facility but it's at least opening our eyes to other concerns that we may not realize we have so hey do you know at this one facility we do it this way, and then you'd be like, oh, well, we do it this way. But you know what? Let me see what policy says, because it's that wake-up call. And, and the key is, is that's what we need sometimes. So whatever we do, guys, remember, avoid complacency. Guys, read stuff that happens at other facilities. All because it's quiet at your facility today does not mean it's going to be quiet every day. So it's good for that wake-up call. Sometimes we have to read an article about what happened at another facility just to remind us of the dangers that we're in. You know, and share that article to your subordinate staff or to your peers. Let them know, guys, I know you had an easy day yesterday, but look what can happen at any moment. Do not let complacency breed complacency. As always, guys, the show is here. Talk if you haven't, please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell is going to notify you every time I post up a video. Leah, say hi.